been some stuff that's happened, especially in the last like 24 or 48 hours. Um, one of the big things that happened was the stuff with Trump, right? So uh, Biden is coming after crypto again because, you know, obviously. And he's taking a lot of aggressive stances um, as far as crypto goes. Um, and he's doing it before the election, which is pretty crazy because, like, he's going to lose votes by doing this, right? So it means this might be important to, like, the Democratic Party to get some of these changes in before they could potentially lose uh, the presidency, right? Um, so the fact he's going after crypto and trying to do some of this stuff, like, what he's doing basically is, I think, he's trying to make it so banks can't custody crypto assets, which would be a big deal um, because, you know, with these, I, with these uh, ETFs coming through, one of the issues is a lot of with ETFs, it allows everyone to be able to hold cryptocurrency through like their brokers, right? So if you couldn't otherwise buy cryptocurrency on like an exchange and like a centralized exchange or use a decentralized exchange or, or whatever, or mine it, uh, you could buy it because your broker owns it and he basically buys it for you, right? Um, but I would assume that a lot of these brokers and these financial companies would want to custody their assets in bank, like holding a bank, right? Um, where they know it's like more secure because they're more comfortable with the traditional financial system. And them coming in and saying, hey, like, we're not going to let you do this is a pretty big block to a lot of the progress, I think, that we've made with the ETFs and some of like the uh, validation of crypto. So that was a pretty big thing that Biden and then the Democrats did. And then Trump actually came out in a press conference at some sort of NFT event or something. And basically was like, yeah, Biden doesn't know shit about crypto. And if you vote for me, you're like voting for crypto. Like you shouldn't vote for Biden if you, you know, are a crypto person. So that was pretty big. Like all the Trump coins pumped, obviously. I didn't look at his NFTs, but I'm sure they pumped as well. Did you see that, Sig? I, I did, definitely. I didn't check out the NFTs, but I, I did see the coins go. Real quick, before we uh, continue the news, I know Slurf, I just DM'd him. I know he's busy right now, but I wanted to uh, have him on, maybe update kind of where Slurf's at. I haven't uh, been too attuned to that. So, Slurf, brother, what's uh, what's good? What's up, guys? Um, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, no worries. You have the pool, I heard. Not to yeah, yeah. dox you, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm at the Somewhere. pool. What's Jim? up? We're just uh we're kind of getting to the finish line on our NFTs. Uh, we pre-sold five thousand of them. Um, we're about to launch our Slurf Index, which is like basically just an index of all the NFTs, so everybody can kind of check them out before we mint. And uh, that should be up in the next couple of days. Uh, we're launching on OKX Launchpad for their NFTs. And um, yeah, so. Planning on once these mints out, we'll have all of our resellers paid back and made whole and stuff like that. And uh, been on the token side, we've been just trying to work on different collaborations to kind of utilize our large LP um, and kind of the stability of our coin. Uh, we got a partnership coming up with. Uh, I, I, it's a platform similar to Pump Fun, but they're gonna. Uh, they're going to be using Slurf LP instead of Soul, so people will be able to make meme coins with for like a dollar or two uh, using Slurf LP. So, uh, got a couple of things coming up. Be excited. Solid. So, I got to ask, how much, real quick, just because I know you got to jump and you need them, we'll go back to you, but how much of the original 10M have uh, have you made made whole so far? Where's the progress okay, at? Okay, so, so the original amount was 53,000 Soul. We've raised about like 31, 32,000 already. So Incredible. we're over half we're over halfway finished and uh of that thirty two thousand or thirty thousand covered ninety seven point five percent of the wallets. So there's wow. about uh seven hundred wallets left, but they're they're mostly like whales. So who sent a, a ton to pre sale so uh So you basically are sending bottom up from like the small guys to like the larger guys just to cover the wallets. Yeah, yeah, to cover as many people as we can because obviously we don't want a ton of people upset for a long time so it, it really helped out doing it this way because i mean 97 percent is is an insane amount so there's how are you all actually sending the the money back you're just airdropping it to the wallets or do you have like a claim 
it, it's an airdrop. So uh, we've partnered with L Bank for for that, and uh, so they've been cust the custodian of all the funds that we received for the refund. So we're not the money hasn't been coming to us, and uh, basically we've been working off the list with them and communicating with them on that. So nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I appreciate you guys having us on. I'm not here. I know you got to jump before. So. Yeah, Thank we'll, you so much, uh, we'll hit you again on Wednesday on the next space. And, uh, bro, enjoy the weekend. It's uh, Mother's Day weekend as well, so enjoy. Yeah, you guys too. 100%. Peace, sir. Peace. Thanks for coming on. Cool. All so, right, yeah, um, so back, yeah, yeah, so the, back we were talking you. about the uh, the Trump situation. Yeah, so what do you think about that, Sig? I mean, honestly, you, you know who I want to ask? I want to ask Thor. Thor, I mean, Thor's been, I don't know if you guys know, he's been... Uh, He's been on a space maybe once or twice. He's a very good friend of mine. He also is very, very close to, uh, well, he actually works with, with Trump, but I'll let him elaborate on that. But Thor, what's good, brother? Do you maybe want to comment on, on the scene? What's new? Hey, what's up, guys? How you what's doing? up, bro? How's it going, man? Doing well, doing well. So, so yeah, tell me, what's, what's the narrative right now? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of Trump in the news. I don't know what you feel comfortable saying or not, and I want to put you on the spot, but I know you're also in meme coins, so... I'm sure you're seeing a lot of this pop off, as Uni was saying. Yeah, no, I think uh, a week ago, end of April, uh, that report, Biden, was just terrible news. The economy slowed fast. Inflation resurged. You know, it's the exact kind of uh, situation that Reagan was in. I don't know if you guys, you know, I was an 80s baby, but if you look back in history, it's very similar. The economy's weakening. Um, you saw Trump with the dollar. I think Biden is just shooting himself in the foot being anti-crypto. It's obviously not Biden because the guy doesn't even know uh, what day it is. He doesn't even know how to exit or get off of a stage. And whoever's advising him, whoever his consultants are, you know, they got to be smart because we are the next generation up at bat. And Trump is the entrepreneur's president. You know, you saw it with his sneaker. You saw it with his NFT collection. And now he comes out publicly, you know, as you guys know, or if you don't know, I'm a big, big Zcash and Zero Knowledge Proof guy, but um, Trump's holdings were totally disclosed because he had a bunch of ETH and, and whatever, and that was a big wake-up moment for people of like, hey, not only is this guy holding, but you can see what he's holding, so I think that's big. I'm looking forward to the day when we, st you know, I think if it's not next election, if it's the election after, it's going to be a lot of money is going to be raised via crypto in the blockchain, you know, and, and that's another avenue. This thing is not going away. It's obviously not in its final form. You know, I'm comparing it a lot to the dot-com bubble where 1999, you didn't really see the Amazons and the big players emerge till 10 years later, right? So we still have a lot of time. We're still super early. And we're still figuring this whole thing out. And the last thing you want to do is put handcuffs on people. Or You see it, man, when we're doing these deals and working on these companies. you got to go outside of America to make things happen. You, if you want a crypto-friendly bank, you can't bank in America. Um, and you see what's happening to places like New York. You just continue to shoot yourself in the foot. People don't want to do business with you or business there. Absolutely. So I, I'm curious... I don't know if you guys can hear me here tonight. Yeah, no, we got you. So I think it's so bullish I didn't want for to cut Trump. Off I think it's bullish for America. No, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think like it's, uh, I think it's pretty interesting, like, how the Biden uh, administration is coming after crypto. Uh, you're, you're, you're all over the place. <laughs> so I think the space is, like, sometimes it does this where when you speak, like, I can't hear some people and some people yeah. can't hear me and, it just, everyone ends up talking over everyone, I was, eventually. But, um, yeah, yeah. Joe Thor, can you hear me? I was driving through the, I was driving, I was driving through the beach. Okay, cool. Now, but uh, okay, yeah, you're good. I want to ask this, and then, Uni, I'll let you, you keep going, and we'll go to everyone else in the panel, obviously. But, Thor, like, I mean, this is a little bit away from meme coins, but, I mean, like, you know, someone who literally works with the president, and the, or, or, you know, the president of the United States, former president, and, and potentially the next president, like, what do you think about people raising money for elections with crypto? Because I saw that, you know, accepting donations in crypto, etc. Plus, now you also have the SEC coming out and saying, hey, ETH might be a security, 
And, you know, now we have the Bitcoin ETFs. I assume he's taking more than just Bitcoin. I didn't look into it yet. But, um, like, what what's the narrative? Like, that just seems so ironic in the entire scope of how all these different bodies of governments are working towards all these different objectives, and they're all saying something different. I think that's where the public ledger is an awesome thing, an immutable ledger, because let's see what the government's doing with their money. Let's see what political entities are doing with their money and let's watch it and make it all transparent on the blockchain i think a huge problem with the, our country and other countries is they take the people's money hard-earned tax money and they mess up with it you know they uh they go over budget they go over schedule they spend a bunch of money on nonsense a lot of guys get their pockets fat and line their pockets and we end up uh, everyone ends up losing whether you're a democrat or a republican you know it's a lose-lose so put all this stuff on the blockchain and make it public and let us watch what you're doing. I'm a big proponent and fan of that, and I think that's the way we got to go in the history. But you're even, you know, public. No, you're even a bigger advocate yeah. for for private ledgers and um, privacy coins. So maybe, yeah, like, talk about that for 20 seconds here, quick as well. Yeah, the same Web One, Web Two evolved. I'm looking at Web Three in a similar fashion from HTTP, open source protocol. I see your computer, you see mine, you know, it was .edu, .mil, all computer programming nerds, so to speak, and it was a small crowd where you could see each other's computers. Um, then the world came online, and everyone realized, oh shit, this is not safe. We need a encryption, we need a HTTPS protocol, you know, you wouldn't be caught dead putting your credit card number on an HTTP website. In fact, a pop-up window will come saying, warning, this is not safe. And I look at a lot of these ledgers, Bitcoin, ETH, like it's that not safe, right? So for a private citizen, if it's, it's our constitutional God-given right of privacy, I'm a big proponent of zero-knowledge proofs, specifically Zcash and some of the other coins of, I can tell you what I have without showing you what I have. I can verify that I'm a trusted human without showing you all my sensitive data. I can send you $5 without you knowing my entire balance and my entire transaction history. And a lot of guys will say, well, oh, you just need another wallet and you need uh, this and a mixer. Being centralized can get scary. It can get, no, you know, we're out on our own sometimes. So imagine when John and Grandma using a blockchain, they're not going to have time for workarounds and layer twos and other wild things have to be built in. And this thing has to protect our constitutional rights of privacy. Otherwise, we risk everything from going to the store and being blacklisted and uh, Starbucks your wallet and sees your pro-Trump or you don't believe in the LGBTQ agenda, something like that, or you send you you go to a coffee shop in Mexico, and next thing you know, the cartel is now looking at the explorer, seeing that you might be a whale, uh, putting two to two together, and you're vulnerable and at risk of getting kidnapped. You know that's an extreme example. And anti with addressable with our common intelligence. You know, I think it was addressable. Just linked thousands of wallets directly to their Twitter handle. Right. So Definitely. this is an important conversation. Yeah, this is a very important conversation. There's a world for both. And I think our maximalism and our tribalism kind of doesn't let us see us the forest for the trees. And we we're, we're, we got to be careful and we got to just like you're uh, about p politics and freedom of speech. You got to be for freedom of privacy. You can't let your um, sunken cost fallacy and your monetarily. Uh, situation make you blind of the fact that is and it's the way I'm hedging my bets and it's the it's the biggest part of my conversation and with that said I'm still looking for the next thousand X meme coin while I do that you can do both absolutely you know? so what do you, you think you're, at, you're advocating like you. ZK right do you think like uh, you know governments even Trump is going to be okay with ZK becoming something that's mainstream because it's going to allow anonymized transactions, which basically allows you to money launder and do all sorts of crazy shit, which is what they basically say crypto is bad for right now. And then people say, no, it's not bad because you can see it on the blockchain, right? Um, but if you use ZK, you can obfuscate a lot of that. So how do you see some of the governments reacting to that? And how long do you think it'll take before 
something like that becomes an actuality, if at all? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Let's talk about it. Let's bounce ideas off one another. Okay, the dollar. When you use it, proof I send a Z graph from a Z graph. Is it just mirrors his audio, like cutting out? Yeah, we're losing you, Thor. You gotta, oh, you gotta yes. have a better reception. Oh. He's just he's just so animated about it. He just he's so like, animated. He's at the beach too. Thor, he's yeah. in the water. I think that's why we lost him. <laughs> Thor, you can't see him with the mic on. The, I'm, pull, I'm pulling out. Yeah, don't forget to extend the antenna on your phone. <laughs> he was rocking one of those big phones in the 80s, bro. Still in the internet bubble. Okay, so till, till Thor reconnects, you need, let's go back to you. I feel like we never even get to right, that. Yeah. Because we jump I mean, it's into good, well, it's a good, uh, it's good to so, be able to organically jump through the news, right? Cause absolutely. It's much better than me running through I'm the pulling, news for 10 I'm minutes and no one says anything. <laughs> Are you better now? I'm pulling out of the resort now. Did you extend yeah, the out of the resort? Your Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we got perfect. you. So, a so, few things. Zcash, you know, um, off the record, they have people in their ecosystem, network, community, whatever that are going to have those meetings in D.C. Um, with lobbyists, with lawmakers, with politicians even. I can do about that and straight up. These decision makers, lobbyists, politicians, they're looking at Zcash as kind of the adults in the room in this conversation. Now, that doesn't mean that someone Biden and his administration is going to come and just lay down the hammer. But once again, we can't depend on anybody to save us. We as a people have to message our legislators, message our politicians, send letters, send emails, send tweets, saying hey, this is our God-given right of privacy, and just the way you trust me to report my dollars if I have a cash business, this is the same concept with Zcash, where the whole world can't see this. There's a viewing key where I can give a third-party permission to view this if I so choose. But I'm going to think future... Rather than us in an Orwellian nightmare surveillance state where we're all on public ledgers and tracked, it's like, oh, okay, Mr. Big Brother, IRS, whatever. Like, if you're an American, I know we have a lot of different people in the world here, but okay, you're an American. Uh, I'm Mr. IRS. You're getting audited. Let me hear you. Obviously, still, it is a painful conversation, but that's. But You're rugging back, sir. You're rugging a little bit. World, let me see your, your ledger, right? So let me see your transaction history, who you've been sending to, who you've been receiving from. Um, so it's a, it's a very interesting conversation, and it comes on us. And that's why I'd say it's so important to be like, yeah, let's have fun with these meme coins. Let's still love Bitcoin. It's an OG that we can't disrespect. But let's be super careful and conscious of where this thing's headed and you know, there's already places where you can't even use cash, right? So it's it, to me, it's a very important conversation that we all have to sharpen our sword on and figure it out sooner than later because we don't want these old politicians steering the ship for us. We want guys like Sigmund, like Mario, like a lot of you guys being the ones who are the leaders of this conversation. And that's why that FTX Bankman Freed thing was such a debacle because for whatever reason, he was propped up to be a cultural editor and authority for us, but we can't let people like that speak for us. We have to show that we are the adults in the room, we are responsible, and we are going to steer this thing in the right direction and be sovereign citizens with our constitutional rights of, hey, not every, yeah. I don't want my blinds open. I don't want anyone coming by and looking in my house. It's my choice to have blinds or not, you know? Yeah, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you off, but uh, yeah, right on. I think it was a a somewhat roundabout answer to to the question I asked, but that's okay. I, I personally think that that's going to be a pretty big hurdle for um, governments to be able to overcome. And I've done a lot of you know investments and deals with privacy projects, and that tends to be their thought on it as well, right? Um, but I do think like they're making a lot of improvements in the space. Um, and we will see definitely, like, more focus on those areas, right? I don't know if it's necessarily going to be 
Zcash or, or Monero, but maybe it'll be something newer um, and better uh, with stronger founding. Um, but yeah, I think we'll go to the next topic since we talked a little bit about Trump and, and some anonymity there. Um, so we have Sugar back on. He's been gone a while. So we can talk, I guess, a little bit about some of the stuff on Solana. I think the biggest thing on Solana right now, for me at least, is everyone's paying attention to Solana because, frankly, these other changes aren't doing it right now. There's some random coins on base that are doing okay. But for the most part, it's pretty slow, and Solana's getting a lot of the action. And one of those big coins is Michi, right? So Anson called Michi at like 3x off the bottom. Um, I thought that one was pretty interesting. I don't know, if Sugar, if you saw that. Or if you have any other thoughts on Solana, maybe you could talk about a little bit about what you've been doing. You know, whatever you want to chat about. Bro, fuck Michi. I had that shit in my DMs like when it was getting launched on Pump Fun, but I, I was having fun getting drowned in fucking Dubai with the other crypto scammers. Like, only bad fucking memories from that fucking trip. But apart from that, and missing on Gen Weld, round trip, everything else. And the fun thing that you mentioned is that Every other chain is kind of stalling right now while Solana is still flourishing. Like, you see a lot of fucking coins hitting new all-time highs today while every other chain is fucking dying, including the mother chain. Because fuck your runes, fuck BRC20s, they're all a fucking scam. Look at it. Like, Bro, the runes are crazy. Like, everyone was so hype about it and, like, you know, it just hasn't happened. Bro, I played that, around with it, I went over there, and it just was, I was honestly pretty underwhelmed. Like, I'm still paying BRC20s. To it, but... Yeah, it feels just like ordinals, right? Like, what's what's the difference? The the only difference is you don't have to inscribe and you just do one less transaction, but it's still bullshit. It's still like trading NFTs. You still can't fucking sell into a liquidity pool. So what they fucking did is basically they took BRC20s, they made the same shit a little bit faster and you don't yeah. have to, you know, uh, transfer inscribe to sell or, you know, move across wallets and shit like that. So end of the day... A little quality of life improvement, but people expected that Bitcoin would become the next Solana, runes would solve everything, now yeah. everything is flourishing. The funniest thing, I'm a whale in this token called Pops, the first meme coin on BTC, and you know everybody was waiting for runes, and the funniest thing is the runes version, version launched, and it's the exact same version as the old one, just with diluted supply, because obviously the dev jitted, and he wanted to have more supply, so he found a you know, a workaround, fuck devs, by the way, and now the solution to make it liquid is to bridge the room pubs back to Solana again. How fucking retarded is that? It's already on Solana. <laughs> like, you're bridging a coin, that's, you, you can fucking get it back once you bring it to rooms, and once you bring it to rooms, to actually trade it, you know, to make it accessible to the masses, you bring it back to Solana, and it's already here. Fucking moral of the story, Building new fucking protocols, new, new new layers that are completely unnecessary is stupid. Just build a bridge, get your shit over to Solana, trade it on Solana, have the provenance of Bitcoin, Ethereum. I don't give a fuck any, you know, unusable chain. But if Solana works, there are bridges that work very well, have never been exploited. Why reinvent the wheel? That's the only thing I truly don't understand. And there's all these weird narratives from purists, like some new fucking protocol that's con like directly connected to Bitcoin is going to solve it. Like Bitcoin wasn't made to trade JPEGs and shit coins on it. Of course, you're always going to have issues. That's why we have Solana. You know, you want to trade it like a shit coin, put it on the chain that was made for shit coins. And that's the whole story. It's fast. It's cheap. It works. Where is the issue? So now you're going to just bring it to new protocols in perpetuity and then just come back to Solana? Pah, bullshit. Yeah, I mean, I mean those like... Those are my uh, two cents. Yeah, I mean, like, with, with runes, right? Like, I think everyone thought it was going to be, like, they'd have all this, like, application their stuff and you'd be able to make easy trades on, like, a DEX and, like, I hopped on. First thing I was doing was going on Unisat to sell shit. And I was like, what is this? I literally just did this on Ordinals. I feel like this is completely... And like utterly the same. I think the reason that runes got blown up so much is just because you had all this money that was sidelined from ordinals, right? And they wanted to be in that scene and they couldn't be because they don't want to buy things late. It's just like their mentality. So they start runes and they figure, okay, we get to start, you know, again. And like we can jump into like the grift and start making our own coins and make profit, whereas they thought they couldn't do that uh, on like an already established ordinals, right? And yeah, it's funny because like you said, like, 
this shit is not designed for memes, right? Like, it's just not. Like, if you want memes, go to a chains that are designed for memes, and there's tons of them, right? Like, why are you trying to force it on and a chain the thing, with tech that's slow? The funniest thing is, of course, when the chain is not made to do something, and you force, forcefully keep trying to do it, a lot of bugs arise. And then you can't cover the damages that you've done. We've noticed with Uniset plenty, plenty of critical bugs. People that get their whole wallets fucking drained because while they were buying something, instead of sending like 0 0.01 BTC, they sent a whole wallet uh, like yeah. holdings. So, you know, at the end of the day, you just like me personally, I don't want to make 10 burners for everything I, I buy just because the chain doesn't work. What the like? Is this, I don't know, maybe I'm exaggerating and everybody just loves having a hundred wallets just to buy something new and to be safe, yeah. but that's just not me. And another funny thing, since we're talking about Solana and, you know, innovations, is that now on Solana, we have max wallets, we have max transactions, we have a whole new meta thanks to like a new protocol that's called like PrinceWap or something. And the whole thing is like, now you can have exactly the same things that you have on Ethereum, you know, tax tokens and like fox snipers yeah. and all the community fair, uh, fake fair launches, so to call them. Because at the end, devs will always control supply, but you will feel like they don't. So, you know, it's the same thing over and over. And all the technology that we have on other chains can be easily translated onto Solana, even though it's a bit tougher to execute because you know rust versus cvm and solidity and all yeah. that stuff but solana is making insane progress and insanely fast so my i best mean yeah it's existed on flux beam for a while right now print is basically taped it, it's different they made a launch thing. Pad out of it right yeah it, it's a bit different because of the ease of use like yeah literally a bozo could go on print swap and make it for flux beam you need a little bit more um uh, like you know, uh, handiness within. It's like that thing on Ethereum where people used to make the contracts and you could like set the maxes and the taxes and stuff. I forget what it was called. Where everyone was just launching them for a while and like. Like Pink Sale. Uh, it started with an M. I don't remember the name, but it was the one like where Bob Blacks launched oil and all those coins. So like people were making them like every day, but basically you, like set standards. But it's like that on Solana. The thing with that is like I feel like Solana people. They don't really want that. They kind of just want it like it is, where it's like no tax and like, you know, just pure memes. And like, they don't really give a fuck if launches are botted. They just do it again, right? Or they bought it themselves. That's kind of what my experience is with Solana thus far. So I'm curious to see like how much adoption something like that gets. Because I've always thought like some of these like cool new projects over there that do fun stuff with tech should do really well. Like a project called Croc Dog and like Sports Mode is trying to do like the first. Peapods fork over there and they've literally like built it and it still doesn't really even have reception right and you would think like the first Peapods fork on solana should rip right but like i don't know that people necessarily care so much about like that kind of stuff on solana they just want to go in memes and fucking meme them all the way up and then do another one i agree man and the whole thing with solana is um, we are very stuck into what we know, right? Yeah, we don't yeah. think we need anything new because it works, it's cheap, it's fast. You know, the, the usual mantra that we've been going by for the longest time, like, honestly, Raidium is a shithole. It doesn't fucking work. Have you guys ever tried to yeah, open Radium's a liquidity horrible. pool? Like, God, Radium is garbage. It, it's actually cancer. Like, and then you may think, oh, sugar, but you have Orca. Brother, have you ever opened Orca? Well, for, for one... <laughs> Orca's like, hard to use, yeah. Yeah, we have aggregators, but who, who uses it? Like, come on, let's be real. So th there's a lot of stuff that we just take for granted and are okay with just because, you know, eh, if it ain't really broken, then don't fix it. And people are a bit adverse to new stuff. And I think eventually, though, when new stuff takes traction, that's where it becomes unstoppable. Like... Talk about narratives, yeah. talk about tech. That That's the very beautiful thing, though, about Solana. Like, it goes parabolic. There's some cool shit going on with Solana with uh, botting. So um, there was a big bot on there called Deez Node, where basically, you know, people were running an RPC that they'd be able to spam Solana and buy the best launches. So you'd get as many hits as you could in a block. Um, but it caused a big problem because the network is being overspammed. 
and basically dying, which is why Solana got taken down. Um, and the Solana guys talked a lot about it and like how they could fix it. And what they've ultimately started doing is they're actually blacklisting these RPCs. So like these people who are running these like RPCs that are spamming, these validators that are spamming the, uh, the network, they're getting blacklisted specifically um, so that they can't spam anymore. That's why you're seeing on a lot of these big launches some different people winning and also like uh, a lot less like huge bundles where botters are like necessarily coming in and taking first. Like every launch of Solana back in the day, we'll say like a month and two months ago, right back in the day in crypto, was won by like random botters because they would just spam nonstop. Uh, but it's not sustainable as much anymore because they're actually like going through and blacklisting, which is kind of an interesting topic because like that's not a thing that I've seen happen ever on like any chain where you're actually literally blacklisting before this thing is live. They're blacklisting the RPC from communicating with the actual blockchain to purchase the coin. Welcome to decentralization, brother. The way we love it on Solana. <laughs> it's Yeah, I mean, it's pretty centralized. I think that the Solana ecosystem is trying to figure out a better fix for this, but that's what they're doing now, and I don't know how aware everyone is, but these nodes, like these nodes these people are running, were like close to like a million dollars to have these kind of setups to be able to be competitive. So you see these guys winning these big like bot plays and posting on Twitter and shit. They're running like million dollar setups and they're splitting like usually like six to eight, 10 ways with the people who they're buying with, right? So it's like a big coalition uh, of teams like trying to take down these launches, right? Um, on Solana. And now they're being thwarted a little bit because they're coming in and they're blacklisting these nodes that they're paying so much money for. And obviously, you know, they're trying to come up with other solutions, but it's a really interesting dynamic about what's actually going on in the bot scene in Solana, which I'm aware of because we were not trying to pay a million dollars for a node. So we know like what the alternatives are. Yeah, we went from using the banana bot on uh, fucking Telegram yeah. to having to run a $1 million, you know, botting, sniping system. And again... It's much more profitable on Solana because the big difference from it, even when it was doing very well, is the insane volume. Like, brother, I don't oh, think... Oh, volume is insane on Solana, bro, yeah. I've seen bullshit at like 5 mil market cap with 100 mil volume within 24 hours since the launch. And like, then you realize somebody must have fucking dumped like 80% of supply for it to make yeah. any sense, you know? Right on. Uh, so, Absolutely. I think we have Penn here... To, I'm going to call Penn and then you can bring next one also. Yeah, so call, we could talk a little uh, bit about yeah, base chain um, because Penn's the base chain guy, right? So, I mean, I was down in Miami with Penn this past weekend uh, watching all of our, to celebrate basically Toshi, watching all of our base chain coins basically do nothing. Um, but yeah, Penn, like, what do you think the state of like base is right now? From my perspective, it seems pretty slow. I think there's some like coins on there that are like stronger and are developing foundations and have good teams, and those will continue to go. But I'm seeing a lot of these like meme raises or even fair launches where I think they should do pretty well and they have good supporting staff, like just not doing what I would think they would. Yeah, it is kind of funny. I'm never planning like big trips or anything again. It seems like anytime I try and plan like some type of yacht party, I second that. Or like any type of nice event, basically, <laughs> my tokens just like stop going up <laughs> more or less. And, uh, I mean, it was kind of ironic. This was the, the Toshi Yacht Party was something we, I, I, I mean, you and I have talked about for fucking months, Tommy, but like something we'd pre-planned and, uh, just seems kind of like around the time that everybody started RSVPing and stuff and, and like came for the actual Yacht Party and stuff. Like most of base chain has just kind of fallen flat. Uh, and I think, I don't know, obviously myself, I, I'm like super selective in this stuff I'm getting into, like you know, I've talked a, a bunch of times about Chomp. That was like the last real thing I got into. I got a little bit of that uh, DGen friends thing, which is doing pretty well last I checked, but I woke up to another like market wide nuke. So I yeah. uh, <laughs> haven't really checked the status of it, but I honestly think a lot of what happens when the markets are green is people just, they don't, really bring any complaints they have about various projects to the forefront because they're more focused on kind of the euphoria. So we see like this huge green wave come onto base chain that's really kind of led by Brett, I would say. Is Brett I, I don't think anybody could really deny that Brett brought a ton of volume and more eyes to base chain because, you know, 
I've been in Brett since three million, and that went all the way up to eight hundred and fifty million. It's hard not to catch a lot of eyes on that. So you have this huge surge of all these different projects building on base chain, and it kind of works a little bit for ETH maxis too, because this is an EVM chain. It's a way for people to get ETH back into the game since Solana has had the majority of the spotlight. But then obviously, you know, we have kind of ETH topping at like 4K. We have everything kind of pulled back a little bit. And then all of a sudden, people that have complaints against various projects, especially Brett, there was so much fun against Brett. I even saw fun against Toshi, which to me is just the craziest fucking thing. Because I mean, I mean Toshi was literally one of the first projects on base chain. And I saw the most uneducated takes. Yeah, bro, I don't know how you fought a coin that's been out for like a year and a half and say it's like insider. Like, that's yeah. a really <laughs> long time. That coin literally like fully died and revived. Anyone wanted to be in that coin, they could have been in that coin, right? Like, yeah. whenever I hear people say it's insider, especially because like they're like, oh, Pan owns it, so it's insider. Like, I remember you bought a ton of that coin when everyone I know was selling it, right? And like, yeah, it started off, like it was still a fair launch when it started off and like people obviously knew about it and like that it had potential, but not the potential that people like it ultimately grew to right and like yeah. it's been out for so long how can you take that position that's just wild it's not like it came out like yesterday right it was it was so it was a lot of the fud is pretty stupid but um i think generally when the markets get red people get bored and they start to then levy complaints and issues against various projects so i mean even at the the peak of fud against brett I don't think Brett at any point dipped below like a 3x down from all time high. You know, if you looked at just the discourse on Twitter, everybody's like, oh, this is the biggest scam. This thing is a, it's going to be a rug, yada, yada, yada. And then like you look at the chart and it's still like over 300 million market cap. Like, really, bro? Like, yeah, that's a scam. Like, let me get into those earlier, please, <laughs> because that is that is my type of thing. But I, I yeah. think. I honestly think there's just been so much noise and negativity around a lot of the top projects on base that it has kind of soured the chain a bit. And I think volume just kind of died out overall. The other thing too, I would say is, and we talked about this on the last time I was on was all these like really toxic, large pre-sale raises just in yeah. general, I think tapped out a lot of the market because really there hasn't. The only one that I've, I'm in that did well was Trump. And I think the reason Trump did well was because they added all of the raise to the liquidity. The majority of these other guys were adding like 10% to liquidity and then pocketing the rest. And it would just immediately kind of sour people. So I think yeah, a mix of FUD against the top ones on base and then these big pre-sales, that whole meta moving over, I think really kind of tapped out the ecosystem for now and you can see it i mean if you pull up the dune analytics you can see that just e volume on base chain is just like it's dramatically down but long term i don't think it really matters i think uh it's an election year the best thing that biden has going for him right now is a green market so i know he's gonna do pretty much anything he possibly can to crank the markets back up yeah. and obviously crypto more or less correlates with the stock market as a whole so you know green stock market i think means green crypto markets so i think it's just i don't know when it's going to rebound but i have a feeling we're gonna have a pretty decent bounce here at some point i mean it'd be nice i think pancake i tried to call you up did it work uh don't know maybe he's having... Ooh, dex hawk as well why don't we go to him yeah dex hawk, what's, good dex hawk. what's up guys um so How's i kind of want to good good how are you guys doing Doing good. I just finished up another space on Mario's uh, account, so I figured I'd hop on this one too. Um, so uh, to kind of piggyback off of what Penn was saying about um, the base chain, I, I I know a lot of the base guys have a lot of speculation about, oh, well, Coinbase is a big is like the biggest exchange in the U.S. and they won't let it fail because it, they have it's you know their name is backing it, and I think they tried their darnest to to push it as much as they could through all the KOLs and all the influencers that they probably onboarded uh, to push the chain. But the numbers are worse than they even look on like DeFi Llama that aggregates all the, uh, all the volume and TVL data. Uh, data. Because right now on DeFi Llama, you look at base and it's pushing about 200 million in daily volume. Um, and and Solana is pushing about 1.2 billion. So Solana as an aggregate is pushing about six times more, but it's 
it, it's actually worse for base than that because I think a lot of the volume on base is people swapping ETH and USDT and things like that, not really the memes. Because when I go to deck screener and I look at the um, like just all the coins on the base chain on there, they have one coin doing more than five million in volume per day. One friend tech, that's it, and it's not even on any one of the one of the dexes. It's on their own platform. And on Solana, there's 33 different projects doing at least five million or more in volume. Do you think that's more but, a criticism on the market state than necessarily base chain? Because I, right? I don't think like, it's. Well, I think base chain has failed to capture the attention of uh, the the degen money in in well, crypto. Well, base right? chain isn't really Solana though, right? Like, what makes Solana that's interesting what, yeah. is like the cost of entry of all these yeah. coins is so little, right? So they have all this right. money that's been there forever. And like, they can buy too. something for 0.1 Solana. Yeah, but right. it's optics, right? When you're buying with F versus you're buying with something that's $130, right. like it matters, right? It, it I, is, yeah, you know, I think like for base, right? Like if they're able to get this Coinbase wallet and all this shit that they're working on, like situated where like people can onboard, I think it's the easiest way to onboard for retail, right? So that's the general right. thesis most people have, right? And I agree. And I think everyone would agree that like volume there's dead. Uh, and on F, it's dead. Volume. Everywhere is dead except Solana, right? Um, right? But I think, I don't think they've failed yet. I think, like, they're preaching, like, no. this base summer shit, right? So we'll have to see. I mean, like, I'm hopeful, obviously, I have a lot of coins on base. And I think, like, hopefully this summer, you'll see a lot more money going into some of these older coins versus the newer coins. I think when chains have been out for a bit and they've gone through this rotation where, like, the grifts have come and gone, uh, mm -hmm. people look to see, like, what the coins are that still exist. And that's like when you see them getting propped up. That's what happens with Ethereum. That's what's happened with Solana. That happens with every chain, right? And I kind of see that actually happening as well with Base, where some right. of these older coins that have been in forever are going to be the ones that really receive the volume versus some of these like random new meme coins that are launching over there that are just derivatives of the next Brett, right? Right. Well, I, I and I, I agree with you. Like I, I think it's it's best for the entire crypto space that all these chains do well, right? Because I have friends that are heavy on base chain. They're heavy on the yeah. coins over there. I, I used to be, I was on base chain day one. I farmed liquidity on Alien Base, on Rocket Swap, yeah, was, and yeah. on Base Swap, which were the first three DEXs on there. Uh, I was one of the first LP providers on there. Um, so I, I want that chain to succeed. I think it has a lot of potential. And I want all the chains to succeed because the less people get burned in crypto by picking the wrong, like, you know, quote unquote, the wrong chain, the more money the whole place, uh, the whole space oh, yeah. brings in. You know? I think liquidity Absolutely. fragmentation kind of sucks, though, right? Like, the fact that it used to be like you had just Ethereum and maybe maybe exactly. Solana or maybe Arbitrum. The fact that all this money is all over the place just means yeah. it's that much harder for projects to well, succeed on, you know. Last cycle places. was just two chains, right? It was ETH and BSC. That was it. Yeah, pretty much. I'm mean, you know I mean? barely, yeah, right? There were some people on yep. Phantom. There were some people on Polygon and on these, you know, other chains. But 99% was on ETH and BSC, and yeah. that was it. Yeah, now you, you got know, people on we're Telegram on chain and shit, right? Like, you're like, yeah, you know, you're moving money <laughs> to new chains and stuff. Like, we're going to talk about Elysium in the exactly. future on a space. Like, that chain will pop off. Like, yep, we're all these world. chains are like, they're just going to get so much attention. It's crazy. I think it, it really gives we're, you an advantage as, like, a hunter, though. Because, like, if you're able to watch 10 chains versus just stare at two, the, hopefully, you should be able to get an edge in, like, you know, one of those 10. At least you can pick, like, a a spot right yeah and i i, I do want to ask uh because this is you know to the topic of the, of the panel or whatever like how do you guys want how do you figure out which chain you want to move to and then when you're on that chain uh what do you guys look for when you're spotting for the next meme coin um because I, I did pretty well last cycle i ended up getting into about six or seven plays nice. turned 80 bucks into 58 million in about 15 months um so i've done well but I, there's a few things I looked for, which was just volume increasing on a project uh, very rapidly while it was in a dip, uh, and then just auditing the contract and the team. But I know the game's changed since then because it's not just ETH anymore. It's a bunch of different. Uni, why don't you answer Yeah, first? it's a little harder with, with two chains. I mean, I tend to use Dex Screener, and I think a lot of other people do too. So I look for... I mean, I'm a little bit crazy, so I check new pairs like within the last like one hour. Um, and I look at like five chains simultaneously. So I'm looking at like Solana Base, Ethereum, and Telegram oh, probably. Madman. And I have it so that I don't see it unless it's over 50k market cap. So that fizzles out 
a lot of the bullshit. And I figure if I hit something on Solana 50K or 100K market cap, I'm not trying to bet on it going to 200K. I really want it to be like one of those like 10 million type things, right? So like that gives me some time to actually look into it and get a feel. So that's what I've been doing, especially in like a slower market. And then at the same time, I'm trying to pay attention to Ethereum contracts that are deployed. But it can be hard to keep motivation and have that kind of grind when things are just so, you know, slow and, and like not moving. But that's my process. I use Dex Screener. And sometimes like when um, people were paying attention to Injective and Sui, I was using Gecko Terminal too, which was just horrific. Um, so usually I try to use these charting sites to check new pairs. And that's kind of how I do it. I don't do too much stuff with volume. Um, if I do, it's usually because I'm looking for like CTOs and stuff, but I haven't gotten into that too much yet. I'm trying to expand. And then if I'm not playing a chain, like if I'm not focusing on Solana, I'm focusing on something else, I try and find wallets on that chain I like, and I'll set up like copy trading for it, or I'll run like, I have an auto trader uh, that I've built. I'll run that on Ethereum, that kind of stuff. Nice. How I mean, you guys? on my side, I'll, I'll comment quick, and then I want to also go to 8Mother and uh, maybe sure can comment, Intelligent Investor, Mr. D's, and a few others. But I mean, I'm definitely not as crazy. I'll, I'll start off by saying as uni, I don't sit on deck screener all day looking at every new live pair. Um, reason being is I have uni as a friend, so um, <laughs> you know, if anything comes up, he really tells me. So I don't thankfully have to sit there and listen to that or, or look at that all day. Um, but on a real note, I mean, for me, and it might sound super cliche, but I just really rely on network. Like network to me is, is everything like uh, above and beyond, um, you know, trading or anything else. I really leverage, um, the people that I have around me that, that just are better than I am and know more than I do in the space. I mean, frankly, I like to think I have a pretty in-depth understanding of crypto and I've been in, you know, for a minute now, but there definitely are people that are experts on other chains that I'm not an expert on, right? There's people that are smarter in different areas. And for me, it's really relying on that and consistently adding value in those relationships and then having them also add value back. So I feel like 99% of anything that I get or hear about in crypto is not something that I just stumble upon myself. It's um, something that someone very, very close to me sends because they know that there's there's a value prop in, in bringing it to me. So I think that that's kind of my narrative at least, which is probably pretty atypical and not what most people would do. Because I think a lot of people sit there and they read and they analyze and they review and look at charts and do all their TA and fundamental analysis where I'm quite opposite in that and where I don't do much of that at all. Also because it's incredibly time consuming and I rather, you know, uh, believe in the trust of the people around me, uh, you know, such as uni, such as sugar and a lot of the people as well on stage here. So um, that's kind of my narrative. Um, hey mother, why don't we go to you and then uh, we'll go to uh, Mr. Deeds and then uh, we'll go to Dexhawk again. Hey mother, what's, yeah, what's up? up guys? Um, I love what you just said because we got sugar up here on stage and can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 mother, you there? He's, He's talking. talking. He's talking. You just can't hear him. You just said. Back up. No, we, we, could, we heard yeah, you there. Go ahead. go ahead, man. We got you. Listen. Oh, you dropped off. Sometimes. Off. I couldn't hear him. Let's bring him back up. While we wait here, for him, you're having, you're having some issues, so let, let him talk. You might be in a project that considered a scam or a rug pull or this or that but one thing you guys got to remember who you meet along the way and those relationships and how you act and your character is not a scam right i've been in, i've been involved in projects that didn't go the way they were supposed to but i met some really special people in that process that on the next one or the one after that i was really able to level up and still build with one another so you never know who's watching you never know what you're dealing with, and just because that project doesn't didn't work doesn't mean the next one's going to work. You know, everything's a scam, but not everyone is a scam. If that makes sense. So, just wanted to. Oh yeah, you know, right on, man. Good. I think network is everything. I think Sig touching on like being able to take advantage of the people you know, versus necessarily having all those skills yourself can be really good. I mean, it's basically just delegation, right? Um, and I think that's a really good way uh, to go about it. I think let's go to deeds and then. Uh, Stoner is on today, and I'm going to let him talk a little bit about something he's working on. Uh, after that, he's working. He's from the Web2 world, and he's working on a Web3 project dealing with free weed. But Deeds, uh, go ahead. Take a shot. Yeah, just going back on uh, like your network. Uh, I actually met, I don't know if you guys remember Esprit. 
Esprit was like a big rug back in 2020. And I met a lot of my core network through that coin, even though it was a big scam and everyone lost huge amounts of money. But uh, yeah, it's like networks and everything. You could, you could lose money on a coin, but still gain out of it by meeting new people. Um, and then going back to like finding memes, I kind of have a left curve style, so I'll just shotgun everything and founder me like founder dog, um, found, like the founder's dog's name. I'll try to search them up, try to like do the digging before they actually come to fruitation. And yeah, that's basically my style of going through it. Oh, and also I wanted to speak on what Thor said about the like governments. Oh, I don't, I don't even want to go into the government thing, but uh, oh, God. yeah, I mean. Nice. That's like a, a good approach, right? Is like kind of like left braining it, just like going into things that you think of like good names and then trying to see. I know after you're in something, you look to see like who's in around you like I do, right? So you kind of look for validation. I think that's pretty good. I'll let you talk on that, <laughs> on the Trump thing, I guess. No, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to say like, I, I think people would be way more willing and happier paying their tax if they could see where their talk, tax dollars are going. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Like the government using a provable public ledger, that'd be like a huge. Like I'd I'd happily pay my taxes. I mean, yeah, if there was a government ledger, I would feel a lot better about it too. Until you saw what they were spending your money on, then you might not be so happy. <laughs> and then you revolt. <laughs> well, then yeah, you 100%. can then you could get the fuck out of the country. Yeah, you're like okay. <laughs> I, I, just seen, here, uh, yeah? I just seen an article today that Biden there was they did an investment seven and a half billion dollars into electric chargers. They've only produced seven of them. Bro, in the like, past, like two years. Yeah, or I think like, that. like a lot of crypto people are gonna. I saw someone tweet about it. Gonna be quickly become like one issue voters because like. If they really keep coming down, at least in the U.S. on crypto this hard, and they do some of this wild shit they're proposing, like it's pretty hard to advocate for that, regardless of how you feel about the other stuff, which I feel certain ways. So, like, yeah, I mean, like, I think it's it's pretty insane some of the steps they're trying to take. And this is where DAOs come in too, right? Like, and this is where the fact we are not a true democracy. The founding fathers made, you know, for Americans a constitutional republic because even in ancient Greece they knew demos was mob rule and the masses get it wrong a lot and that's something else to think about with your DAOs or with your decentralized projects is you know you need a few leaders at the top who are making smart benevolent you know wise decisions and if you let the mob and the masses rule and vote on something they get it wrong more often than they get it right you know, so we got to remember, you know, you can't spell masses without asses. So pull your pants up and wipe your butt. <laughs> I can see why you, uh, <laughs> you work for Trump. Okay. Um, for, well, I, work for, I work for everyone. I work for a lot of people. <laughs> so he's just, he just one of like many. No, clients. I know. It's just like your, your quips. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. For, I'm going to bring up Intelligent Stoners, so a little background on him. So he's been on the spaces, every space, I think, since we've started hosting. And we have a lot of guys like this, um, and I get a lot of DMs and stuff. But I actually had a call with him, um, and he's like a doxed real founder uh, building a, a project in the weed space. So I told him I'd let him come up, talk a little bit, um, and then we can do that, and then we can wrap it up. And if any of the panelists want to ask any questions about it, feel free. I think it's a pretty cool idea. You're all probably going to get DMs from me about it anyway, um, but at least you can hear him chat. <laughs> I appreciate it, Yuni. Um, th thanks for having me. Appreciate it. My background is cannabis. Um, I've been in cannabis for eight years on my own dispensary, got acquired by, the, by an MSO, did three years stint with them as a VP, um, and then I got into crypto, and I firmly believe that blockchain can solve a lot of issues in our lives and specifically in the cannabis industry. So started building in this space, started building an app for the, uh, for the cannabis industry. Um, and then I, you know, kind of just echoing a little bit what uh, Sig said, you know, it's all about your network. It's all about kind of who you know. And I've, I've met a lot of great people along this journey in, in my crypto journey. And built a lot of great relationships within, you know, cannabis, NFT projects, meme projects, etc. So decided to kind of launch my own, I call it a culture coin, if you will, meme coin, culture coin, 
to unite all of these different projects kind of under one banner and that way we can all win together. So that's what I'm building. It's uh, it's fun. I, I like I said, I've been in cannabis for eight years. It's like you know dog years in, in cannabis, just like being in crypto is you know dog years. Um, but I think the combination of of crypto, of cannabis, of memes, of DGENs, I think it all just works perfectly together. And so, yeah, I mean, high level. That that's the project we're launching. Sorry, space is, space is glitching me out. Yeah, right on, man. And, and they're doing some really cool stuff. So, like, you know, it's a meme, but they're also going to do some stuff with, like, free weed where you can win weed at, like, local dispensaries through, like, partnerships. Um, I think it should be a pretty cool project. They're also not raising a lot of money. So you'll hear me talk about this more in upcoming spaces. And if you're in, like, my network, you'll definitely be receiving some sort of DM from me because they're raising a small amount. But, um, yeah, I just wanted you to come on, chat about that a little bit. Any other guys on that. here on the panel have any thoughts about this project or any, any other stuff going on on Solana or Base or anything else you want to say? I think we're Sig had some technical difficulties, so we're trying to bring them up, but we're kind of wrapping up anyway. Uh, uh, if it, I'll just share really quickly since uh, Mr. Yeah, D sure, shared, or somebody shared that they had a very left brain way of finding projects and getting in on yeah, stuff geez. really early. So I, I got I got a very right brain version of it that I talked to a lot of people. It, it's the same type of method, right? Live new pairs, you go into the new pairs, you find stuff super early. Um, I go through and audit the, the code of the solidity contract. Now, thankfully, back when I did it, you had to do it manually. Now there's a lot of scanners. So that's, that's very helpful that there's a lot of automated ways to do it. Um, once that's done, tracking the team wallets, you know, making sure that the team is transparent about what they're holding, why they're holding it, what the purpose for it is, um, seeing if anybody sniped it, and not disclosing that they've sniped other tokens on top of what they're holding. Um, and then after that, just, again, tracking uh, holder count growth, tracking um, volume growth, and looking for uh, that, that parabolic uh, rise in money flowing in and out of the project at the same time uh, before the price moves. Um, and again, through that, I've been able to, uh, like, I got into Floki at 4 mil market cap, and I was a part of the team all the way up to $3.5 billion. Um, and was a part of many other projects as well that, that ran to, uh, I think I caught every, every billion dollar project under 10 mil last cycle, except for one. I didn't get into baby doge, but I got into every single other one, uh, super early. I got into Dogon on Mars in the first hour. Uh, how long process. does that process take you? Like when you go through that process, how long does it take you? Is it, it an to... hour? Is it five hours? Like, what does that look like? Back when I had to do it manually, it took about, yeah. uh, it took about 30 minutes to go through it really in depth. Okay. Um, yeah. I had to teach myself how to read Solidity, which I can't code it. I can't write it for shit, but I can read it. I understand how yeah. to read the contracts. Uh, now, thankfully, because of the scanners, uh, you can, like, a lot of that stuff's automated. Um, yeah. Same with, like, checking liquidity. Back then, you actually had to go to Unicrypt and check to see if liquidity is locked. Now, it just tells you on the page whether it's locked or not, <laughs> and it gives you a link to click. Um, so, it used to take 30 minutes. Now, I can audit something in, in like, under five minutes, usually, okay. uh, very quickly. Nice. But, yeah. It's, it's a good process. It's very right brain, though. Like, there's a lot of skills. Spray and pray usually works better, honestly, because you get into stuff in the first, like, two minutes and, uh, and throw a salon into everything, and something yeah. will go a 1,000x. You know? There you go. <laughs> nice. Hey, Uni. Hey, guys, guys, really you. quick. I got you back up, yeah. <laughs> Uni, really quick, guys. Uh, unfortunately, I got to jump off here. Um, I, I, I'm at my limit, but Uni, I, you, you should keep doing the space. Keep going. Um, just again, uh, we're gonna, I think we're going to wrap anyway, cause we're right at the hour. So that's fine. That is true. We are right at the hour. So why don't we do this? Why don't we wrap up the space now? And then, um, you know, uh, that being said, just so everyone knows, we're going to be shifting the spaces to Mon or sorry, to Wednesday and Friday, 3 p.m. EST. So we're going to drop the Monday show. It's just a lot like there's, there's not, you know, enough in meme coins, I feel like, to cover this, uh, you know, 156 times a year or whatever. So instead, we're going to drop it back to about two times a week on a Wednesday and Friday. So next show is going to be Wednesday at 3 p.m. EST. Uh, so make sure you guys come for that. Obviously, again, thank you to all the speakers on stage. I mean, Ten Thor, Dex Hawk, yeah, follow, Investor, follow all these guys. Tom, if you're, if you're Mal, listening. Five, um, Sugar. I mean, I can't even name everyone that was on. But again, thank you to everyone that came on. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you guys soon. And um, we're gonna have some projects on next week, and we're also gonna have the Bonk guys on as well. So looking forward to uh, to having that. So follow everyone on stage. Really appreciate it, Mario. Thanks again for hosting this and giving us the platform. Uni, any last words? 
Yeah, no, I mean, the only thing I'll say is I'm, I'm starting to do a lot more video format teachings on my Twitter. Um, I haven't done this in the past, but I feel like people hate reading. And it's a lot easier for me, actually, to do them, especially with teaching on SoulScan. Um, so if you've heard me talk about SoulScan and, like, how to do some of the stuff I do on Chain, I'm actually doing video, like, lessons, so to speak. They're, like, a minute or two that I'm, I'm tweeting. So check them out. Let me know if you have Let's any go thoughts. Follow uni. Anything you guys Absolute want. OG. Anything you guys want me to talk about and, and try and help provide educational content on, I'm happy to do that as well, assuming it's not, like, insane. Um, yeah. But, yeah, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, I really like that we're cutting the spaces two to, back to two times a week. I mean, I was <laughs> three times is a lot, especially in the markets like this. So I think, Definitely. Uh, yeah, good space cool. today. Thanks, everyone, for hopping on. And I'll see you all later. Thanks again to the speakers. Make sure you guys follow them on stage, and we'll see you at 3 p.m. Eastern Wednesday. Thanks again, guys. Chat soon. Appreciate it. Thank Peace. You later, everybody. Later, guys.